So I wanted to take a look at the premium radios that were available for 1993. As you may know, these are getting pretty spendy in terms of how much you're going to spend to get a good one, especially the CD players. And with these cars being 30 years old, or give or take, um, they're starting to fail, and, and finding folks to repair these is not always easy. Um, but if you know what to look for, you can find some cheaper alternatives to repair your radio and get it back into a functional condition. So starting with the cassette players, there were actually two different styles of cassette players available if you got the premium radio option. There's this particular style here, which is electronic, eject, play, reverse, etc. Then there was a version that had manually operated uh, forward, reverse, and eject button. Uh, they were both premium radios. I believe 93 Cobras got the radios that you see here, which are very similar to the 94 up Mach 460 radio. And the regular 50LXs, four cylinders, etc., got the manual operated radio. So the radio from the right is actually from a 93 Cobra. Uh, it is no longer functional. The cassette player doesn't work. And the radio itself is quiet and only works on two speakers. So it was sold to me as non functioning. I think I paid 50 bucks for the entire radio. But really, what I wanted it for is parts. Now, the other radios on the side came from other various Fords. I believe the bottom one is from a Ranger. The top one is from a Lincoln Mark 8, a 93 Lincoln Mark 8. And the middle one is from a 94 Town Car. I paid, I think, 15 bucks for the Ranger radio and maybe 50 bucks for the other two. Um, but that's to go and show you that you can get these radios in functional condition. All three of those work perfectly fine. For pretty cheap if they're not this specific mustang radio that is in, in high demand in functional condition these radios are probably in the three four hundred dollar plus range but if your radio goes out you may not need to go and seek out one of those other radios in order to get yours back in the road so what makes the fox body radio unique compared to the other ford radios well there's a few characteristics for the fox body radio that are, differ from other ford radios First of all, as you can see, it has this tray that mounts underneath. Now, this is actually part of the structure of the bottom tray here. So as I tip that up here, you can see that it has a plate that is riveted to the bottom of the radio that allows for the cup holder to bolt to that. I'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Uh, but other features, as you can see here, are the squared edge along the Fox body radio. Now, if you were to look at other Ford radios, you'll find that some of them have rounded edges like this. That's actually one of the key differences between the Fox Body radio and a lot of the other Ford radios. Uh, but there are other, some other characteristics that will vary. Some of these radios have green displays and some of them have blue displays. You can kind of see the angle of the lighting here that the Mustang radio here has a green display. Another major difference you'll find is that some Ford radios have five presets and a clock button, and some actually have six presets. Now the Mustang radio should have a clock button there, like this faceplate here. I actually began taking this faceplate apart because this unit had a six preset, so I swapped the buttons. But this is essentially what you should see on your Fox body, is five presets and a clock. Now some of the Ford radios out there, like this one, you'll see, have six presets. So that's one of the major things to keep an eye on here. If, that, if you're replacing the radio uh, and you get one of these radios that has six presets, you're going to have the clock button there, but you're really going to have a six preset. That may or may not make a difference to you. Just something to keep an eye out if you're looking for one of these radios to interchange with yours. So here's the bottom panel of the Fox Body radio. Now this one is from an 87 to 92. And there's some subtle differences that mean that you can't use this panel on the 93 style radio. Now this would be the bottom panel of that radio. And these can be removed. There are two screws back here. One and two. Sometimes they don't have the screws and they just allow you to push it off like this. But some of them do have the screws. And what you would do is you would simply take the panel off, swap it. The three fingers would line up, fold it down. And now you have your panel on your, your radio. The problem is that the 87 to 92 panels don't line up with the tabs here. You can see this tab right here 
few lines of the center, they don't line up. You can probably make it work with some modifications, but I'm just letting you know that if you have, if you use an 87 to 92 radio as your, your donor, um, you're gonna have to do some modifications to get it to work. Uh, but this plate is a requirement to take care of one of the most essential parts of the radio, which is mounting those cubbies on the bottom. Everything else is a little bit easier to get around, uh, but the cubby is kind of key here. Now you could try to drill out these rivets and fasten it to the bottom of your panel. You can certainly do that. Um, you'll need to figure out where to put it for alignment. And if you'll notice here, it's, it's roughly centered, maybe about a little less than a quarter of an inch there, but that's probably gonna be the trickiest part is aligning that. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is since this radio is not functional, I'm probably going to use one of these three radios as my, as my donor unit, swap all the Fox body specific parts over to it and get it functional again. Now, just to say a couple notes about the CD players, the CD players have the same challenges, uh, but it's a little bit more difficult to find replacement face plates for the CD players. For one, I think the Square Edge CD player only came in two particular models. I think it came in the Mustang only, uh, as well as the Bronco. Other than that, every single other Ford car to get the CD player had rounded edges. And as with the tape decks, you'll notice that some CD players have six presets and some have a clock button. So that's also something that you'll need to take into consideration. And finally, Another difference, you'll notice the top radio in this view is green. It has a green display. You can see the green screen in the center. But the two under it have blue displays. So if you were to swap this into your car, they would show up. The, the buttons would light up blue and the display would also be in blue. Um, some folks won't mind that. They don't drive their car at night, etc. They just want a functional radio. Um, some folks have changed their LEDs in the car so that green's not even there anymore, but that's just something else to be aware of. Now, looking if you look online and look for faceplates, you can probably find these CD player faceplates pretty easily. But the problem is going to be that you need the square edges here. Now, some of these radios have worn buttons, like this one here. What you can do is you can take the faceplate apart and swap your buttons out. And I'm going to do that for one of these radios here. So just a note on the rear of the radios, these premium radios are typically all the same. So just to start here, you have the data manufacturer, 420 something, 94. This is a 93 Lincoln Mark 8 radio. This particular bracket here can be flipped. Simply pry up with a flat blade screwdriver, lift it up, and you can swap it to the other side. Now your power plugs here are the same for all the premium radios. This is actually how you can identify the premium versus non-premium. For your power connection, which goes into this spot, it's your typical Ford gray plug here. This has your main radio power, your, your constant power, and your other wires that power the radio. Now in your non-premium radio, you'll have a similar black plug that'll plug in here. But as you can see with the premium setups, you have three other plugs. So for these plugs here, typically on most of your Ford radios, you're going to have a shorting plug, which goes into the top. Now, without this shorting plug here, which shorts vertically, uh, you may have an issue with the radio actually being quiet, not making any sounds. But most of your particular applications are going to have that installed. Now, where that is not installed is where a CD changer is actually installed, in which case a plug like this would go and connect to the CD changer. Now, you can see the part number on this cable here, F3LF, that's a 93 Lincoln. The 93 Lincoln CD changer is about the only one that I've identified so far that is compatible with these units. I have yet to get my hands on one with the wiring to test it out, but that's something I'd like to do at a future, future date. Now the next plug down is your eight pin amplifier plug. This is your sound that goes to your amplifier that connects to the same here. This is the same as Mach 460s and such. So there is some interchangeable between these radios. And finally, your bottom plug is not typically used on the Mustang, but down here is a simple two pin plug. I uh, can't quite get it in there without screwing to focus, but two pins, two wires. This one, I believe, is used for steering wheel controls. What it controls, I'm not sure exactly. I think it does volume up and down. 
Now this is not used on the Mustang, but some of the other Fords like the Taurus and the Lincoln actually did have, uh, I believe, volume up and down. If you can figure out the wiring, maybe the plug that's used for it, you can kind of get that working. I've yet to test that out on these other radios, but that would be kind of a cool feature to see if you can implement. So believe it or not, faceplates can still be found on eBay. If you search Ford radio faceplate, there's a number of them that pop up and every once in a while you can find one of the ones that you need. So for instance, this is the CD player faceplate, but you'll notice this one has rounded edges and a six preset. I also believe it is in fact a blue display. So this wouldn't be correct for the Mustang, but it's great for the volume, the, excuse me, the buttons and such that you have, because all these buttons are in brand new condition. Same with this faceplate here. This is similar to the Mach 460 one, but you'll notice it has a Mazda door on it. But other than that, all the buttons are the same. This one has a clock, and I believe it is a green display. Moving on here, this is actually, I believe this is the correct unit for a Mustang here. Um, this is the correct Mustang faceplate, it's green display, square edges, has the clock button. Uh, but as I go up here, these are Lincoln radios here. So you see Lincoln on the door, six preset, green display. This one here, also Lincoln on the door is a blue display with a six preset. And then this is a faceplate for a manual control. So one other key thing to point out, this pertains to pretty much the cassette players. The CD players, I have not seen this difference. But on the cassette players, as we look at the edge, you'll notice that there's a difference how the faceplate's attach. See on some of them, they use a screw to kind of secure it to the side. While some of them just reply, or rely on the clips of the faceplate itself. Now the Mustang does not have the screw. And you'll notice two of the three radios here that I've got do have the screw and one does not. Now, the difference also applies to the faceplates as well. So this is the faceplate that belongs for a Mustang. And you'll notice the edge is smooth without that screw feature. This one is for a Lincoln, but does have the screw feature on it. Now, I've kind of studied these and I do think that you can remove that tab feature and use that faceplate. Um, so I don't think it's too much of an issue if you have a Dremel and some time. Uh, but for my needs here, the radio that I'm actually going to use is this bottom one here. So as I move these two out of the way, I'll reposition these and show you why. So this unit here also has a green faceplate, green display, and the clock button here. So it'll be very, very similar to what the Mustang has. Uh, but as you saw, this one has these screw holes on the side. So I'm going to use this Lincoln faceplate, which has the six preset and the Lincoln door. So what that means is that I'm going to actually take, use this faceplate for parts, take the clock preset off and take the Ford door off. So that's going to be quite a little bit of part swapping here to get this unit working. Um, but really what I'm using here is a new radio, and I believe this is the Ranger radio. I could be wrong. F3ZF19B165AF. So I think I paid 15 bucks for this radio. The cassette player works. I've tested it. The radio works. I think I paid 20 bucks for this faceplate. Actually, no, I'm pretty certain I paid less. I think I paid 20 bucks for a group of four or five of these. Um, so this faceplate was maybe five bucks, and I think I sold the other ones to make some money back. But I'm going to use this faceplate on this radio, and I'm going to swap out the door and the number six preset. So step one is to remove the bottom radio storage tray off the Mustang radio. Now you'll notice here that there, these two radios use different methods of attaching the top and bottom plates. The unit on the left simply just presses on with some detents to hold it in place. While the unit on the right uses a T8 torque style bit to hold the plates on. Now they are interchangeable uh, but you'll need a Torx bit to remove it off this unit. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the bottom plates from both of these. You simply remove the two screws, get under here with a small screwdriver, pry it up, and then you can kind of peel the edges off here. It's pretty easy to do. So to remove this clip, 
you're just going to come under with a small screwdriver, flip the tab, and pivot it out of the way. Now to remove this, simply come under here with a small screwdriver and lift that up. Now this might take a couple tries. Basically you're going to lift it up while trying to peel the edges away. It's a little bit tricky and I might need to do this off camera here. Okay, so with the lift it up, simply peel it up, kick it to the side, and there you go. It's the same on the other radio as well here. Pivot it up, and there you go. Now one thing I did notice when I was looking through my radios, this is a different radio than the one I'm working on, but you'll notice here that this bottom plate has one, two, three, four, five rivets. I did notice on two of the radios I had, one, two, three, four, five. So it appears that the holes for the plate are already in place. Now what that means is that I can take the plate off the unit for the 87 to 92, pop the rivets out, and attach it to one of these and basically make a proper plate for adapting to one of these radios. So this is the plate installed now on the Lincoln radio. Um, you'll notice here, round faceplate. All I did was swap it in place, pressed it down. You'll notice that the, the plate that came off had the detents holding it in place, but the radio off the 93 Mustang, the plate off the 93 Mustang radio has the screw holes. Now these holes are already present. You can run the original screws in here and it'll work fine. So now we're at the fun part. We're gonna take the faceplate off the 93 Mustang radio. To do that, it's a little tricky to see, but if you come under the back of the, ra the back of the radio and look, you'll notice there's tabs, one there and one there. If you gently pry those tabs up, you can kind of lift the faceplate over a lip. There's two on the top, and then there's two on the bottom here and here. So I just took a small screwdriver, went under the lip, and gently pried it up, and faceplate will then come right off. Now this green backing here is what gives the um, coloration to the actual buttons. So as you see, the, there's a green colored lens here, and then you have your green tinted here for the buttons. Now you can mix and match if you want the blue. You simply take this backing out of one of the radios that has blue. If you want the green, you can take it out of the green. If you want a blue display or a green display, this is the option that you have here. Now, if you remember correctly, some of these face plates are held in place with two screws on the side. These are T10 Torx bits. With the screws removed, you can actually begin to pry the face plate off. There's no clips holding this on. But what you'll notice is the construction of the radio is a little bit different here. On the 93 Mustang, the control board and buttons are part of the radio and the face plate comes off that separately. On this style radio, you can see that the board and the faceplate are one with a ribbon cable. So just to show you that not all these radios have the detachable face, here's one of my other radios. As you notice, this one does not have the screw. I was able to go in there and unclip it like the Mustang radio. And as you can see, it is very similar to the 93 Mustang radio. You can see the blue display here and what gives the buttons the blue color. So the faceplate doesn't matter in terms of the coloration of the buttons and such because these windows can actually be removed. So back to the radio swap here. The, because of the difference in how the circuit board for the faceplate is attached, there is no interchangeability between the faceplates that have the screw hole mounting versus the ones that lack the screw hole mounting and clip on. The 93 Mustang uses the clip-on style faceplate. So if you don't have all of the parts, another faceplate to do the swap, your best option is to try and seek out one of those radios that does not have the screw hole on the side. Now in my case, I do have a faceplate that features this. So I'm gonna end up swapping this board over to that. Um, and disassembling this is a little bit tricky, so I will um, make a few details on that. Disassembling this faceplate and this one are pretty much the same. So this is going to apply to you no matter what uh, radio board you're using. 
So to take this clear section out, there are a number of clips here. There's one here, one right here, and another one over here. What you need to do is very gently bend these outward while you pry up on the white portion. You want to be careful because these can break pretty easily. But in order to change out this door and this lens, you need to take out this white section. So with this white piece removed, you can actually notice that now you have easy access to the button. And these is where you can remove the buttons depending on which ones need to be replaced. So where this is worn, you can swap it out from button for buttons from another faceplate. Uh, you'll also notice that now you have access to swap this door out and to change out this lens if you want. Now the lens is also held in by some clips at the top here, so you want to be very careful on how you pry that out. Now to remove the door, you're going to just simply come from the back side and pop it out. There's two tabs at the top that hold that in place. For the green lens, you want to take a screwdriver and gently pry this up while you push with your finger at the top. That will get the lens to pop out from the top like that. And with that said, now you have access to every single one of these buttons. So now is the time if you have a six preset or a clock, if you need to switch that out, you can remove that from your old faceplate and swap it over to the new one that you're swapping on. Um, hopefully it's in similar enough condition that it blends in, but all of these buttons at this point will simply lift out and you can swap them easy. You can clean this faceplate up, you can clean these windows up. Um, at this point it's all disassembled. Uh, the hard part is done and now you can start reassembling what you need. So there are eight Phillips screws that hold the faceplate on. And once you remove those, you can remove the circuit board from the faceplate. And as you'll see, it is pretty similar to the 93 Mustang. It's just part of the faceplate not attached to the radio. So I'm going to swap the, I'm going to leave the green button keypad to match my interior, but I think I'm going to use the blue lens in this case. So what I'll be swapping here is I need to swap the clock button to this faceplate instead of the six. I also need to swap that Lincoln door to the Ford door. Now these both have green lenses, so I'm going to need to dig out one of my other faceplates and take the blue lens. But I think I like how the blue shows uh, better than the green. I am going to leave the green buttons so it doesn't look totally out of place though. Now with the white frame removed, the trick to removing the buttons is to slide it down and then Pivot it up. That'll pull this number six out here. Oops. You probably get another the other buttons to come out too. It's a little tricky to do while trying to film, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and swap out this six and this door with the uh, with the clock button here and the Ford door. Uh, nothing really holds the seat and volume buttons in, so they're going to fall out on their own. You're probably going to end up losing all the buttons as you manipulate it, so take a photograph so you know which button goes where before you begin this. So I'm finishing up this faceplate. Um, what you'll come to find out is that when you flip this, these faceplates over, once you remove the yellow trim that's holding all the buttons in, they pretty much all fall out. So I've got a couple faceplates of parts here. But what I ended up doing was swapping the blue window in here, the Ford door, and I just finished swapping in the clock preset. Now these buttons, the way they work is actually to remove them, you slide them, I'll do in the clock, you slide them down and then unhook, pivot it forward and then unhook it and up it comes. Now when you install them, sorry, when you remove them, you have to start from the top down, but when you install them, you have to go from the bottom row up. So in other words, if you're changing the six for a clock or vice versa, you have to remove the three first and then the clock. And then when you go to install it, the opposite. Now, you'll notice here, there's a hook for the bottom and then two teeth for the top. What you wanna do is put it in to the bottom and then just simply push it up to engage the two top teeth there. And you'll notice they all want to fall down. But once you get the clock in, you'll do the same for the three. You'll kinda of come in hook the bottom piece and then push everything up. And at that point, you'll want to flip it over and reinstall that white plastic frame.
Now, once you have all your buttons in, you want to make sure that they're all pushed as far forward as you can to properly seat them. At that point, you'll just come in with your frame, line them to the alignment tabs, and push down until you hear a positive clock click. So that is it. I would highly suggest testing your door. Now, CD players obviously, obviously won't have the door. They'll have a slot. But that's it. Verify that all your buttons are in the proper positions. They move freely. They're not binding. And this faceplate is ready to be installed. So with the faceplate complete, um, if you have the unit that has the circuit board attached to the head unit, you're simply going to take the faceplate and, face and clip it on. Now, for those of you that have the separate circuit board, you're going to basically screw it back into place here. And here, we're simply reattaching the circuit board to the harness, sliding it back in place. Now, we'll go ahead and screw the sides on here, uh, but this pretty much wraps up converting this, I think it was a Ranger radio originally, or a Mark 8. Uh, but basically now you can mount the bottom tray on the on the bottom and this will slide right into a Fox body Mustang. And then one final thing to do here uh, is the rear guide. So this is the one that came off the old Fox body radio, F3ZF. Um, but the white ones that come on the other radios, they work the same. But I'm just trying to keep Fox body stuff as much as I can here. So you pretty much just slide it down, clip it into place. And there you go. So this project probably isn't going to be for everyone. Well, first of all, you need a donor radio to really start. You're not going to be able to get some of the key components unless you get really lucky. And one of those key components is the bottom plate that mounts this radio cubby. Uh, but I probably have maybe $100 in parts into the radio on the left. Now, I'm probably going to run the CD player in my car. Um, but I have a Bluetooth tape deck, so I would like to try that in the car uh, for the tape player. But anyway, I'm sure most of you want to see what the blue display looks like with the green buttons. So let's get this in the car and try it out. Alright, so here we are back in the car. So I must admit, I did make a mistake uh, choosing to go with the blue LCD display and the green buttons. Um, wasn't too thrilled with that. I'm going to put a picture up right now so you can kind of judge for yourself. But overall, not too bad to kind of take these radios apart. Um, one main reason I can think of for why you'd want to do such a thing is the cassette players on these. The eject play sometimes fails, and if you want to replace that, finding one of these Fox radios is, is difficult and expensive. But if you know what to look for, now you can use another radio to substitute. Um, for instance, when using a Bluetooth type cassette here. Um, I kind of like this feature here, so I think I'm going to use the tape deck. I'm going to eject that. But as you can see, it works great. Uh, but I'm going to try this out for a bit. I may swap the CD player back in. But I wanted to make this video to kind of show you that you have other options if you do have a busted out 93 premium radio. Um, there are other radios out there that even though they don't look like they can fit with some with some part swapping, you can make it work. Uh, but I hope this video helps you out. Uh, let me know if there's any questions. Thank you very much.